So, this is kind of a sequel to the fun little story I did a few days ago um, called Scrooge McDuck's Multiversal Spooky Special. So this is the sequel to that. I thought this would be a fun little multiverse crossover that actually got a lot of uh, hype from it. A lot of people really liked it, so I thought it'd be kind of fun to do like a follow-up to that story and um, add some new specials and whatnot. But if you don't know what this is, the, basically the story is that... Um, Scrooge McDuck, in an act of desperation, works with Gyro to uh, Gyro Gearloose to bring all these different character, Disney TV characters together to make like a Muppet Show type deal, to, so he could write, get a tax write off for chair for a Halloween charity. So there you go. If you want to know more, just go a few la videos back, and you'll check. It, you'll be able to see it there. So here um, we're following that. Uh, Scrooge, which had a huge turnout, it was it, the first one was so much fun, and Scrooge McDuck being, well, Scrooge, he decided to make it an annual thing where he would bring all the character, everyone from across the multiverse back together, and essentially what he would do is have a, a, gyro, a gyro along with a few other of the uh, more intellectual people of the multiverse, like, broadcast it as, like, a spe like an annual Halloween special for the entirety of the multiverse. So this year is no different. Where in this, but this time around, there's kind of a snag. What is that snag? That snag is Maleficent. <laughs> so in this, uh, we find out that e ever since the start of this, uh, Scrooge had always sent an invitation to Maleficent that she always declined. And uh, but this time around, Maleficent never got the invitation. And the reason why he would send her the invitation is because, he, to quote Scrooge in this story. You send her the invitation regardless. <laughs> you se if, Male if there's a party, you send an invitation to Maleficent. Um, because if she doesn't get it, she, it's, she considers it an insult, even if she doesn't bother showing up. So, what happened this time? What happened to, the, uh, what happened to her invitation this time around? So, in this, Launchpad was supposed to send the invitation, but he thought it was junk mail and threw it out. In fact, there is a bit of a bit to that where Scrooge sits uh, Launchpad down, and Scrooge goes, So, Launchpad, what happened to the invitation to for Mala uh, for the invitation I gave you? And you won't be mad, Mr. McD? I will not be angry. Well, I saw this uh, invitation, this little piece of paper with, the, with a name on it. Oh, did you? What was that name? Uh, and you won't be angry. I will not be angry. Mally someone. Mally someone. Mally who? Mally Efficent. Mally Efficent. I'm almost sure that was the name, Mr. McD. I'm a I'm hundred percent sure that was the name. <laughs> so Launchpad, you're telling me that you threw out the invitation for the, one of the most powerful beings in the entire multiverse? Is that what you're telling me? Kudos if you got that reference. <laughs> in fact, that whole bit that played out was the reason I'm doing this whole story um, again. So Maleficent shows up and she's like, hmm... You know, I never got an invitation. What was up with that, Scrooge? And Scrooge is like, oh, it's, it's all a misunderstanding. Oh, good. I thought I would, pay, you know, I know you never liked these shows anyway, so we didn't think much of it. And he's like, well, today I'm feeling festive, so I shall be watching the show today. And, it, and also to add injury to insult, Maleficent, not only because in this I did a little change because someone said, instead of Stan and Ida being the Stantler and Waldorf up in the booth, it's Stan and Granny, uh, Granny Green, uh, from Big City Greens. So, those two are the, uh, Stantler and Waldorf, but in this, um, Maleficent not only turns them to stone, but m merges them together to be her throne, and she's like, if y'all don't, if you guys don't make me laugh, I will make them my permanent chair back in my world. So, inter so, I hope to enjoy tonight's festivities. So, Scrooge goes on with the show and is like, Today we're graded by a very special guest, our uh, guest of honor, Maleficent, Mistress of All Evil. 
In fact, Maleficent is so well known in the in the multiverse when she shows up the first time, um, Ida, Lilith, Amity, um, all bow to her. Like they all just are like, "Oh shit, that's Maleficent," and they tell Luz, uh, "Do you know who that is? You bow, you bow to her." <laughs> so the whole running gag to, of to, of that night is that. Um, Malefic they have to entertain Maleficent the entire night. And if she's not entertained, then Granny and Stan will be completely screwed. <laughs> so, in this, um, we have some new bits. Like, um, for one, we have uh, Ford doing a retelling of... Uh, along with uh, Ford and... Uh, who was the other person? No, it wasn't Ford. It was Dipper and Seuss doing a retelling of the cast of Amontillado by Edgar Allan Poe. Um, we also have a fun retelling of H.P. Lovecraft's The Color Out of Space with uh, the characters. It's a more comedic... It'd be more like a comedic version of this story in, with um, the characters from Wander Over Yonder because they're already funny looking as it is. Um, we also have... Um, Bat out of a rendition, a cover of Meatloaf's "Bat Out of Hell" with the characters from Wander Over Yonder. Um, as for others, we have. A, there's actually another. Let me tell you this fun bit where um, Huey is like, "Hey, Uncle Scrooge, um, I got a, I got someone to try to make Maleficent laugh," and he's like, "Lad, the only way you make her laugh is if you're torturing somebody." Oh, then you're not gonna like who I got. And Scrooge is like, "Who did you get?" What comedian? And then he hears off in the stage, Waka Waka! And he's like, oh, Huey, you didn't. And Huey's like, I did. So they got Fozzie. They got Fozzie Bear, because we're already doing enough of the Muppets. Why does not have a Muppet here? So he's like, hiya, 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 Foz the name's Fozzie Bear, telling jokes both old and rare. I tell you, folks, uh, there I saw this evil queen who was so ugly, and Maleficent's up in her stare like, how ugly was she? She was, uh, she was, she was not ugly at all. In fact, she was so beautiful that everyone loved her. <laughs> anyway. Um. So that was kind of like, I, like, you know what? I'll just have them up, like, have the Muppets here, since I'm already doing enough of the Muppets. So, um. Anyway. So, like, for other bits, there is also a retell... There was also, um, like, I had another idea where they do a cover of uh, Werewolves of London. Uh, Randy Cunningham and Howard, you know, do a cover of, of uh, Werewolves of London by... Uh, not, not the movie, the, 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 um, the song. Uh, what else was there? There was also a cover... They also, Dan, um, Randy, along with Jake and Kim, get together to do a cover of Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the song. Um, as for others, you have uh, Dipper, who goes a little darker. He delves into a little more darker stuff and does a cover of Sympathy for the Devil, um, dressed as Bill. He's, he's not possessed by Bill, but he, like, dresses as Bill to, uh, uh, to like sweeten, like, make it interesting. They make it more interesting. Um, <laughs> what else was there? There was also, uh, what, a, oh yeah, Bark at the Moon was another one that the character, that, um, this time around it was Ron who does Bark at the Moon. Um, there's also, uh, I, you know, here comes the boogeyman, the classic uh, hush, hush, hush. Here comes the boogeyman, and that one was done by um, the the Greens. We also have uh, in this another version of uh, "I Put a Spell on You" from Hocus Pocus. But in this, it's like um, Ida doesn't want to join the show because she thinks it's stupid. But at the same time, it's like, um, but they're gonna, but Maleficent's gonna kill Stan, and she's and Ida would be like, she'd be doing me a favor. Obviously referencing the being Stan's ex ex wife, so so Ida's like she'd be doing me a favor if she did. Um. So there is so. Finally, Luz gets Ida to give in and do. I put a spell on you with Lilith and Amity. Um. 
Oh, and that was like the big final bit that makes Maleficent go. Bravo. I'm done. Let's ha I'm going back. I'm never doing this again. And I actually know like she stops and like comes back and is like, you know, maybe I should come back next time. Maybe I'll bring some friends too. Obviously referencing the other Disney movie villains. And <laughs> Scrooge is like, oh god, no. And Maleficent goes, you'll be well compensated, of course, for any damages. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, Maleficent. And everyone else is like, what? <laughs> so, from here on out, it basically becomes like every year, um, th they would get, all these characters would get together and not only just entertain the multiverse at this theater in Duckburg, but also entertain all of, like, Cap they'd entertain Captain, like, all of the Disney movie villains that Maleficent brings, and she sh she just sits there. She did free, she was a, she did keep her word and let them, uh, stick around. But basically, uh, uh, basically in this is that Stan, Stan and, and Granny were freed, but now... It, Maleficent sits up in that booth and watches everything. So there you go, guys. That is pretty much um, that is pretty much the video. There you go. Um, I probably won't do a third one. I just thought this would be a fun idea. Like I said, it came from a bit. It came from a bit that played out in my head. From um, and yeah. So you guys tell me in the comments below. What did you guys think of it? Like it? Hate it? Comment below. Let me know. Once and uh, as always, if you haven't already, check out the link below to my Patreon. Also, curious to see what bits you would come up with something like this. Once again, I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the Multiverse.